What up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Bardo Brigade Talk Show. Today, I'm with Nadim. I'm with Silent Mike, and we're going to talk about something a little bit more nerdy, a little bit more programming based, a little bit more um, like that. Jewish? Uh, huh? You said Jewish? No, no, no. Like, like putting the glasses on. Oh. Like, you know, like um, when it comes. You can't to- tell with you, bar. You know, you got to be careful. Oh, okay, fine. You know, what we're talking about like uh, like training and stuff. Why do you have the fucking hands like that? Like a Ninja Turtle. <laughs> Ninja Turtles, dude. You see, yeah, dude, they're coming he's up with a, a new one. He's a big fan of uh, Trek Wars. I think Seth Rogen's directing it? What? Ninja, Ninja Turtles. Oh, he's been falling off. Right, who cares about that? We're talking about programming, right? Yeah. Programming is yeah. usually manipulation between frequency, volume, intensity. Yeah. And you're going to. Steroids. Gonna, and, and also steroids. That's yeah. the fourth variable. Um, for you, you're trying to go for a big deadlift. So am I. Yeah. At the end of this year. Um, and I think you've had one of the biggest changes in your programming. You have like four lower body days. You want to talk about that? We call it centaur training. I train my upper body to look beautiful and stunning. But I saw your program. There's no upper body stuff. Yeah, I program it. Uh, I don't write it down. Okay, okay. It's like bodybuilding, hypertrophy. I want girthy vascular pectorals that glisten in the sun. Okay. And then my lower body. Yeah. We're doing four days a week. Well, like Meg the Stallion lower body. Not Meg the Stallion, but A Stallion. Lizzo. Oh. No, A Stallion, like a horse. Got okay. It. Like sea biscuit. That's pretty good. Is that Rudolph? <laughs> I think that's Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. No. Yeah, on steroids. Rudolph on trend, where his fucking schnoz is a, a the red cop light. Is, it's it's a, a cop light. It's a pimple. Yeah. The acne. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Poor so guy. How do you like it? How do you like training for lower body four times? Are we allowed to shout out my coach, dude? Which is insane. Yeah. So shout out Joe Game Day, Joe Stanick, but his real nickname is Joe Stank. Mm-hmm. And the Stanker is taking me through it, dude. I told him, I said, Joe, I'm an old pony. You know, this is gonna be a tough ride. Yeah. Nobody, Jockey nobody, man. nobody wants to ride you back then, but nobody wants to ride me no more either. Yeah. yeah. But Joe believes in me. He threw his money down. He gave me the trend because I think that's for horses. Okay. And now we're hitting the ground running, man. So yeah, I'm doing, I was doing like one working set a day, right? I squat something kind of heavy. Like one hard set? Yeah. Do you do back offs usually? Mm. Really? Mm. So before, so like, you know when you post like your 585 for three on yeah. a deadlift? Oh yeah. You do that and then you're done. Oh, then I'm taking a wheelchair to the buffet. Before Jeez. or now? Both. Then, then. So not both? No, now, now I'm a savage. So yeah, I would do one top set. But I was still, my frequency was kind of high. And I still, like jokingly, the centaur thing is just a joke, but I kind of trained that way. I would train uh, double singles, triples on squat and deadlift two or three times a week each. Um, and kind of no other lower body training, which even when I was more specific to powerlifting, I, I never really did a lot on my lower body because I was so specific to the movements or I'd do variations of the movements. One, because my legs grow a lot. And then two, often I would get too sore that it would mess up my next training session, right? So if I squat uh, Monday and I want to have another squat session Thursday, very common. Most people squat probably two to four times a week, depending on your level. Um, and I'm doing a bunch of lunges and Bulgarians and all this. It would affect, negatively affect my next session. I'd rather just put that energy towards squatting. Right now, the pure goal is the deadlift pig. So I'm just letting Joe go. Joe's one of the best, smartest cats in the game. Uh, I think he will be. He has been for a while, but he will be for a long time. Um, And so, yeah, Monday, Thursdays, just a shit ton of quads and squats. Tuesdays, and I'm switching it to Saturdays, it's just a bunch of deadlifts, backs, and hammies. Wow. Yeah, and then I'm just floating in some hammers. So it's almost like posterior lower and then like anterior lower. Yeah, kind of. That's kind of how it looks like he split it up, you know, like squat and squatty things, you know? Yeah. Squatted a bunch of pause stuff and a bunch of reps. Quad based things. Then then I went to a belt squat with some bands and some Bulgarians, and then today was RDLs and shit. How do you feel? I'm really beat up, bro. It's week one, though. Oh, so you'll get used to it. Yeah, yeah, uh, but I'm beat up. When I saw your program, that reminded me of like uh, one of the classic like high frequency uh, programs, just small off. Because I think you start off with almost like a, uh, I think like 10 by four or something. That's like 70, 75 oh, percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then it goes to like nine by four, yeah. then like eight by three, and then like six by something. And then you're doing four times a week. And the range is usually between like 70 to 85%. Yeah. Or a lot of the Shaco stuff is kind of yeah, and you're, in the, you're in the 70 to 85% range, but you're just banging triples all the week. Yeah. And you bang it so much that like your back starts peeling. Cause yeah. it's not like, you know, like you can hit 30 reps, three back by 10. Peeling? Yeah. yeah. Cause you know, I like, even have it right now. Cause like for example, oh, like putting the bar yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause when you're like a, like a training leg, like let's say bodybuilding style, right? If you're still hitting 
like 30 reps. It's usually three by 10 of something. Right. Powerlifting is the other way around. It's 10 by three. Yeah. But so you're getting and unracking 10 times versus three times. And then on like those crazy programs, Shaco or Small or whatever, like my back would be peeling and it's I got like, sensitive skin, dude. My shit's already jacked up on week day one. <laughs> so when, when you're doing like four days, it's yeah. four days? Yeah. So are you moving your volume across or are you just adding a shit ton of volume? With, with my upper body or what Joe's doing? What Joe's doing. Uh, there's a lot of volume everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like a squat day was like a top top triple pause to start, and then a bunch of back downs of fives, and then belt squat and Bulgarians going so what, crazy. What's like the? I was gonna say mythology. What's the mythology behind behind that? that? Um, so I think I don't want to speak for Joe, obviously, uh, in his method, but like knowing him and we consulted and we've talked on the phone a bunch about my programming and programming in general. Um, I think the general is to keep variations. Um, and, and kind of run waves of volume and intensities till you run out. Yeah. So, um, you know, like my one deadlift day, I think straight weight, whatever, and then the other day is paused. And we'll both wave those up for as many weeks as we can, making good progress, a sets of five, and then he'll probably rework it so it's either another variation or another rep scheme, and we'll wave that out. Some people will, will kind of run into a wall at one to two weeks, some people might make progress if you're a newbie. You might be able to run that same rep scheme, fives, pause. Six months, maybe. Yeah, yeah. forever. And yeah. if we're making yeah. progress, man, we're riding that centaur to the sun come home. And we're just going to keep going, right? No, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Often works in programming. I don't believe in that saying everywhere in life. Um, my basketball coach used to say, uh, screw that, break it, and build it back stronger, which mm -hmm. I think applies a lot of places. But programming, yeah, you kind of want to run it if it's running. Um, and so we'll continue to do that. And uh, what all he told me, um, again, I gave him full reins, and I think that's the best way to learn. Even though I could program for myself, I literally programmed world record holders. Like I, I'm very capable. Um, but the best way to learn and the best way to make progress is Bart talks about it a lot. Just putting on my athlete hat and saying, "Yes, coach, yeah. and here we go." Um, but his goal, I think, is the end of whatever wave this is, is for me to hit an all-time uh, five rep PR. So that's all I know from my first block. How does it feel to like get coached as a coach? Ha having not been coached by someone for such a long time? Pretty good. Um, I don't want to like give Bart credit, you know, because it hurts sometimes. <laughs> but Bart did tell me, he's like, dude, like this will help you like stay a little more motivated. You might light a little fire. Because um, he actually tried to sell me Tren in the DMs. I told him that I wasn't that motivated. You, and that, you guys, you have his number, but you still talk in DMs? Yeah, we actually do. <laughs> we do, actually we do DMs both. A lot. Yeah. Sometimes we'll have both. We talk in the DMs a lot. Sometimes we'll have conversations going on both. Like yeah. this one's like a little more serious, and then this one's just us fucking around or yeah. like talking shit. And then when he talks about Tren, you're like, dude, just keep this in the email. Yeah, he put it in the DMs. That's way more uh, likely that we're going to get fucked up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but he, he was, I was just saying like, yeah, dude. And, and it's still true. We're like, my competitive spark just isn't there. Yeah. I used to be an angry dude. And so it, just all that kind of just dissipated as I got older and I kind of killed it on purpose. It's a little bit of ego stuff. Um, what about, because I see a lot of lifters that are like, if you want a bigger bench, you got to bench a lot more. So it's like, for I see sure. like USAPO cats and like, I think Noriega and like a, a few of his athletes or some other people even flex sometimes like, four times a week. Yeah. And for me, I'm like, dude, my body would fucking like kill me. It would take the fun away from the training. So it may definitely take the fun away from it. Uh, but I think there's ways to get higher frequencies. Like Bart said, you're manipulating intensities, variations, and other things. Um, and obviously you don't go from benching once a week and just throw in five. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna get beat up and hurt. Uh, the mental part's a whole nother aspect. But if you, if you know fulfillment and goal is to bench the most, then you won't get burned out anymore, yeah. right? Like you have so much other stuff. You have your creative side. You like lifting. You know, you're more like us where like benches, you don't wake up thinking like, oh, I'm a bench today. Um, but there are a lot of people that are, and there's but nothing wrong with that. if someone were to hold a gun to my head and tell me I have to bench 400 in like three months. What are you doing? I'm going to bench every, maybe six days a week. Yeah, you're benching every day. So yeah, I, yeah, I do yeah. think, and because it is a smaller muscle group and the overall load you're using in the bench press, typically, not always, is going to be less strain on your body than a deadlift or something because you're handling just simply more weight and more muscles are being used, that you can handle uh, a lot more frequency and even volume and intensity in the bench press than people think. Yeah. Just because you're tight and sore, bro, I, you probably saw me walking around your house. I'm waddling around your house like someone's got a fucking samurai sword up my backside, but then I get my deadlifts done. Like You can be very sore and still perform. Yeah. Um, and I think once you start moving, the soreness kind of goes away. For sure. You just get warmed up, right? Yeah. Your mentals feel good. And the bar might move fine. But um, I, what's the general question? Favorite frequencies? Yeah. But also, I think, like, touching on what Nats is saying, I think frequency is also, like, athlete-specific, but also taking into consideration sure. the psychology aspect. 
because if you're hating what you're doing, you're not going to stick to it for a long time. You can find fun ways. Like if Nads hates that or he knows he's going to get burnt out, like, all right, dude, we're going to do a reverse bench today. Like just max out. Or yeah. we're going to do dumbbells tomorrow only. Just go hop in and you have no other workout. Yeah. You're just going to do three sets of 10 on a dumbbell incline and then call it a day. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's, there's ways to co coach the mental, which is just as big of a part, a holistic approach to get them to uh, stick to the program and have fun. Yeah, I think my best progress was made, remember like back in the day you used to do we're like bigger on west side, so there'll be like heavy days, but it wasn't like max out days, but it'd be speed days and then heavier days, and then I think the third day was um, like a volume day. Yeah, like a body um, volume day, yeah. And I think it switched it up enough that like, okay, I'm moving sore and stuff, but the speed days was light enough, but I'm able to push through the muscles and like get my muscles warmed up, and then the volume days obviously is just lighter weights, but m more reps, and then the days that are more fun, they're just gonna go heavy and not do as much cardio. So it's like, as long as you're constantly switching it up, I feel like it's good, but then when you get to the more stuff that I feel like works for especially natural people, it's just a lot of volume. Yeah, yeah, I mean volume is gonna trigger a lot. Building muscle is highly, highly correlated to how much weight you're gonna move. Um, and then obviously the more volume, uh, another word for volume we can use in powerlifting is just practice. Because yeah. volume equals reps. And what do you need to get good at anything is you need reps. Yeah. So like your bench groove is just gonna be so solid if you're doing it three to five times a week with three to five really good sets on those days. Yeah. Because I do feel like doing something once a week or even twice a week, it obviously building that motor pattern, if you're doing it more frequently, it's going to be better. Yeah. And obviously weightlifting is a different sport, right? There's yeah. no eccentric in a lot of their lifts. The light, the lifts overall are submaximal because what even a weightlifter can front squat or back squat. Talking about the, Olympic weightlifting. Yeah, I'm sorry. Olympic weightlifting is going to be a lot less than a clean and jerk or a snatch in terms of total load that their but body can handle. It's just called weightlifting. But in case people are like, yeah, people don't know. know. Yeah. yeah, but you are right. Uh, both are right. Because uh, people that like, yeah, for sure. The Lifting weights. We are like, weightlifters. Yeah, yeah. We take weight. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. lift it, uh, which I agree with too. But um, those guys are training nine sessions a week. Yeah. Right, because they need that groove. They need that practice. They need those reps. Once a day, for nine times a week. Nine times a day for once a week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> that hurt my head. <laughs>